He just wants to use the ADX VMA to generate exit signals, right? To exit a trade. Yeah, all right, so simple enough. Um, all right, let me make a new logic template here. Uh, all right, new logic template. So, all right, so we're gonna create an exit signal when the ADX VMA um, is flat or neutral, uh, right? A neutral trend. So, uh, all right, so let's close that out. And uh, I need to get the ADX VMA on my chart here. So the ADX VMA that I'm going to use is from Lizard Trader. There we go. And let's make this plot a little thicker. There. All right, so what are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking for exit signals when that trend goes flat. Now, of course, uh, you know, this doesn't work too well on a Ranko chart, but in any case, the logic is still the same. Right. So, all right. So those are kind of the points at which the ADX BMA goes flat. And that's when we want to generate short signals right there. All right. So let's get Bloodhound open. And let's switch over to our logic tab. Now, this is one of those rare cases where we're going to use the threshold solver. Right on with a indicator that runs on the price panel. And we'll see why that is here in just a moment. And so as I mentioned with the previous system, with the, yeah, that typically the threshold solver is used with indicators that run on their own sub panel. It's down here, such as the CCI, MACD, and RSI. But since the ADX VMA generates a signal for us, that's why we're using the threshold solver. Okay, let's get a name in here. All right, so we're looking for when the ADX VMA is flat. So let's go plug our indicator in. There we go, select it there. All right, I'm just using, you know, the default settings here. And so what we want is this data series called trend. There we go. That's what we want. Now, normally, um, you would just do something like that to actually get the trend state, right? So that's the trend state, but we want the opposite, um, right? So if you notice, so with that, with this data series here, let's back up, right? So this data series called trend, you know, I know from experience that this trend, it will contain a positive one when the indicator turns blue. It'll generate a negative one. So when the indicator is, turns red, the trend equals a negative one. And when the trend is neutral, right, the gold area, the trend is zero, right? So zero for neutral, positive one for uptrend, negative one for downtrend. So we need to look for that zero value uh, as a threshold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a threshold of a positive one. So A is basically the, is now the uptrend. E is gonna be negative one, so that's the downtrend. And so what we're looking for is this zero value here. There. All right. Now, since it's an exit signal, we're going to generate a long and a short output at the same time. That way, the exit signal will exit uh, a trade in any direction, right? So, because, yeah, I guess just, just to be on the safe side, right? We'll, we'll, we'll exit both long and short trades uh, when the ADX VMA goes flat. So, um, all right, so let's see. So actually we could just leave it like this. You know, this is fine. If you if you want to make sure that you have no trades on when the ADX VMA is flat, 
then this will work. You can just leave all of these exit signals on as they are, right? Because an exit signal can't do anything unless there's a trade on, right? If there's, if there's no trade to exit, then an exit signal can't do anything, right? It's, it's just kind of benign. So having all these extra exit signal outputs is okay because they can't do anything once the signal has been exited. So we could just leave it alone like it is. Um, but, you know, just to kind of go a little further, if you want to want things to look cleaner, we'll add uh, some simple logic here to kind of clean the signal up. There. So I'm grabbing a look back node so I can use the displacement. And then I'm going to use an XOR node. So I'm going to generate a little um, Boolean logic here. All right, so now we can see we're starting to get right uh, a single signal, uh, but it's not quite cleaned up yet. We need another AND node. So this is kind of a, a Boolean way using Boolean logic, right? An AND node and an OR node to, to block signals. So now if we look at the chart, what we see, right, is we see we get an exit signal on the first bar of a, a neutral trend. All right, so there you go, first bar. Then we had a little short downtrend, and then we get another exit signal when that goes neutral again. Yep, so there we go. So over here, yeah, we have a we have a couple of bars that go neutral for one bar. Uh, right, so we had an uptrend, then it went neutral for one bar. Then we had a one bar downtrend, then it went neutral again, a one bar uptrend, and then it goes neutral again. So, uh, yeah, again, you know, I'm using this indicator on Ranko bars and uh, see that this indicator uh, originally definitely was not written for Ranko bars. So, but anyways, there we go. Uh, all right, yeah, so there you go, Terrence. Um, and so, again, the key, a key to getting that neutral trend is with the threshold solver, right? We set A, A equals the uptrend, a positive one. E equals the negative trend, so, or a downtrend, the negative one. And then what we're looking for is those zero values, which is a zero, right? The neutral trend is the zero value. 